Hey, I'm, I'm Jay Wright. I work for the State Environmental Laboratory of uh, DEQ. And DEQ is the state's primary environmental enforcement agency for drinking water, wastewater, hazardous waste, and air quality. Uh, we have uh, six different divisions in DEQ. Four of them deal with water in some form or fashion. Uh, everything from hazardous waste releases, uh, Superfund sites, groundwater contamination, uh, harmful algal blooms, fish contaminants, uh, private drinking water, private wells, uh, public water supply, municipal and industrial wastewater, and water quality planning. Um, I went around to the different divisions and talked to them about possible research needs and collaboration opportunities. Um, and our land protection division, uh, first thing that they said was uh, low cost technologies for screening, possibly remote sensing for LNAPL and DNAPL plumes. Um, they are difficult to delineate, they are difficult to uh, track, and they are most of all difficult to clean up and they are also expensive, and so low-cost solutions to these would be very helpful. Uh, and at the Tar Creek Superfund site, I know that we have done a lot of collaboration with Dr. Nairn on mine water discharge and passive treatment systems. Um, EPA is in the very beginning stages of figuring out how they're going to handle uh, sediments and uh, mine waste that's in streams. If you go up there, uh, some of the streams in the, in the highly affected areas actually flow over top of 10 to 15 feet of mine waste. Uh, as they remove that material, um, those streams are going to be looking for their path uh, on, on ground that they haven't seen in 80 to 100 years. And we really feel like there's probably going to be some opportunities for some significant stream morphology work there. Uh, as far as fish contaminants go, um, Oklahoma has more lakes with um, mercury consumption advisories for fish than lakes that don't. Uh, and our lakes in southeast Oklahoma have some very high values. Uh, if you look at mercury deposition, across the state of Oklahoma. Northeast Oklahoma gets about the same amount of mercury deposition, atmospheric deposition, as southeast Oklahoma, but the levels and the, the concentrations in the fish in southeast Oklahoma are up to 10 times higher than they are in northeast Oklahoma. So the questions are, is where, where's the mercury coming from? Is it local, uh, regional, or global sources? Uh, how does the mercury flow through that environment and what makes it more bioavailable in southeast Oklahoma than it would be in northeast Oklahoma? Uh, and then finally, as far as when it comes to wastewater, we're, we're looking at a lot of new advanced treatment techniques uh, for brines, for brackish water, uh, for storm water, things like that, and we need better management techniques for reject water from those treatment systems and other wastes that, that come from those treatment systems. And I think that's it.